Shalom, family. Today, we're going to switch it up just a little bit. Hallelujah. We're going to read a scripture in Matthew, Matthew chapter 7, verse 5. And it says, don't judge others and Yah will not judge you. If you judge others, you will be judged the same way you judge them. Yah will treat you the same way you treat others. Why do you notice the small piece of dust that is in your friend's eye, but you don't notice the big piece of wood that is in your own eye? But you don't notice the big piece of wood that is in your own eye. Hallelujah. Look at yourself first. You still have the big piece of wood in your own eye. You are a hypocrite. First take the wood out of your own eye. Then you will see clearly to get the dust out of your friend's eye. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Our Father and our Yah, we thank you. Hallelujah. We glorify you. We magnify you. We lift you up on high. Hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah. That you have us living in the land of the dying. And we thank you that you have us walking on your street in your narrow path. And we thank you that you are guiding us with your eye. Hallelujah. We thank you that we can see, hallelujah, the familiar spirits in our own family. And we thank you that you have given us the power and the authority to cast those spirits down and out of our family's lives in Yahushua's name. Hallelujah. Father, we repent for anything we've said or done that doesn't line up with your word, any covenants that we've made with the enemy in any way, shape, or form, we denounce those evil covenants. We cast those evil covenants down. We send those evil covenants to the dry places of the earth in utter darkness, and we say, burn up right now by the fire of Yah in Yahushua's name. Father Yah, hallelujah, we thank you and we praise you. Hallelujah for what you're doing for each and every one of us. And we thank you that you will keep us on the straight and narrow path. Hallelujah. And when we veer off, Father, hallelujah, you remind us that we have veered off and will be quick to repent. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. And we give all of your glory right back to you. In Yahushua's name. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you all for joining us. Hallelujah. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you have learned anything on our platform, like, share, and subscribe. That helps us get the word out to the people who may not know anything about Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I always say, seek the face of Yah. Do your own research and let Yah guide you so that you will be convinced of the truth in your own mind. Always do your own research and always let Yah guide you. Hallelujah. As I teach today, take an inventory of yourself and answer these questions in your own heart. Can you identify 
the familiar spirits in your family? How many generations do those familiar spirits that you can identify go back? Hallelujah. Keep in mind that every family has familiar spirits. There are no perfect families. Hallelujah. If you have not listened to the first lesson on familiar spirits, go back and listen to the first lesson, then come back to listen to this lesson. The link for the first lesson on familiar spirits will be in the description box below. This way, you will understand the basis or the foundation of familiar spirits. And you will know and understand how to rid your family of these spirits. I mean, hallelujah. Today, we will discuss familiar spirits, specifically the spirit of the fear of authority. On our agenda today, we will cover the definition of the spirit of the fear of authority. Then we will discuss Abraham or Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. And we will look at other spirits that come with the spirit of the fear of authority. Hallelujah. The spirit of the fear of authority abuses truth through deliberate act of deception, of deception that ends in self-deception. In other words, you're only fooling yourself. Hallelujah. You're not fooling Yah and you're not fooling any of the people around you. Hallelujah. When people are afraid of authority, they have the fear of authority. They will do their best to make what was spoken over them come to pass. Therefore, their actions does not confirm the reality of Yah's truth. Let that sink in for a minute. Hallelujah. In other words, when people are afraid of authority, they are making the word of Yah of non-effect because they are walking in self or you can say they are walking in flesh. And you can define making the word of Yah of non-effect in Mark 7, 13. When we walk in self or when we walk in flesh, flesh is trying to make Yah's word come to pass. Instead of just believing Yah and standing on his word. Hallelujah. Let's look at Bereshit chapter 16 verse 1, which is Genesis Chapter 16, verse 1, it says, Sarah, Abram's wife, was not able to have children. She owned an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So Sarah said to Abram, Yah has kept me from having children. Why don't you sleep with my slave? Maybe I can build a family through her. And Abram agreed with Sarah. When Ishmael was conceived through Hagar, the act was a sign of Sarah and Abram's action to try and make Yah's word come to pass because they did not believe 
that Yah would allow Sarah to have a child. Let that sink in for a second. Hallelujah. Who opened the door to the fear of authority? The spirit of the fear of authority. Or you can say unbelief. It was Sarah and Abram. They both agreed. Hallelujah. Unbelief is not believing Yah's word. Hallelujah. Walking in self or walking in the flesh because flesh is trying to make what Yah has said come to fruition. This is also the spirit of the fear of authority. Hallelujah. The spirit of the fear of authority happens when people are afraid of what the person with authority will do. Hallelujah. Or it could also be that we just don't believe what Yah said. Hallelujah. Let's talk about Abram, Pharaoh, and Abimelech. Abram deceived Pharaoh and Abimelech about Sarah's identity. They claim Abram claimed that she was his sister. And that's partially true. But how many of you know that when you say partial truth, it's still a lie? Hallelujah. In Bereshit 12 and 10, Genesis 12 and 10. And we're going to read 2 verse 13. And it says, There was a famine in the land, and Abram went to Mizraim, and we should know by now that Mizraim is Egypt, to stay a while because the famine was severe. When he was about to enter Mizraim, Abram said to his wife, Sarah, I know you are a beautiful woman. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife. Then they will kill me because they will be killed. They will kill me, but let you live. Please say that you are my sister. Then everything will be all right for me. And because of you, I will live. So what Abram was saying is lie for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I want to live. And if you lie, we're going to be okay. So what is that telling us? It is telling us that Abram did not trust Yah to protect him. Abram was walking in the fear of the spirit of authority. Hallelujah. So he and his wife lied. They both agreed to lie. Let's talk about Isaac. In Bereshit, Genesis 26, verse 7 says, When the men of that place asked about his wife, Isaac answered, She's my sister. Who is Isaac? Isaac is the son of Abram. So this occurred in the same family. Abram lied or Abram and his wife lied. And in this verse, Isaac lied. It's all in the same family. 
And the scriptures go on to say, he, meaning Isaac, was afraid, full of fear, to say, my, he was full of fear. He did not want to say, my wife. He thought that the men of that place would kill him to get Rebecca because she was an attractive woman. Isaac did not trust Yah to protect him, just like his daddy. So Isaac and his wife walked in the spirit of fear of authority. And they lied. It's the same spirit in the same family. Hallelujah. You had Abram and his wife who lied. Then the son of Abram, Isaac, and his wife, they lied. This is the same spirit, the spirit of the fear of authority. And I'm saying it over and over so that it will get in your heart. Hallelujah. They were afraid of what the men of of authority would do to them. Take a breath. Let's look at Rebecca and Jacob. Who is Jacob? Isaac is the daddy of Jacob. Rebecca and Jacob conspired to deceive Isaac about Jacob's identity. And you can find this in Bereshit, Genesis 27, verses 6 through 30. And it reads, Rebekah said to her son, Jacob, I just heard your father speaking to your brother, Esau. He said, bring me some wild game. And prepare a good tasty meal for me to eat so that I will bless you in the presence of Yah before I die. Now listen to me, son, and do what I tell you. Go to the flock and get me two good goats. I'll prepare them as a good tasty meal for your father, just the way he likes. Then take it to your father to eat, so that he will bless you before he dies. Jacob said to his mother, My brother Esau is a hairy man, and my skin is smooth. My father will feel my skin and think I'm mocking him. Then I'll bring a curse on myself instead of a blessing. His mother replied, Let any curse on you fall on me, son. Just obey me and go. Get me the young goats. He went and got them and brought them to his mother. She prepared a good tasty meal just the way his father liked it. Then Rebecca took her older son Esau's good clothes, which he had in the house, and put them on her younger son, Yaakov. She put the skins from the young goats on his hands and on the back of his neck. Then she gave her son, Yaakov, the good tasty meal and the bread she had prepared. He went to his father and said, Father, yes, he answered. Who are you, son? Jacob answered his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I've done what you told me. Sit up and eat this meal. Sit up and eat this meat I've hunted for you so that you may bless me. Isaac asked his son, How did you find it so quickly, son? Yah, your Elohim, brought it to me, he answered. 
Then Isaac said to Jacob, come over here so that I can feel your skin, son, to find out whether or not you really are my son, Esau. So Jacob went over to his father. Isaac felt his skin. The voice is Jacob's, he said, but the hands are Esau. He didn't recognize Jacob because his hands were very hairy, like his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. Are you really my son, Esau, he asked. I am, Jacob answered. Isaac said, bring me some of the game and I will eat it, son, so that I will bless you. Jacob brought it to Isaac and he ate it. Jacob also brought him wine and he drank it. Then his father Isaac said to him, come here and give me a kiss, son. He went over and gave him a kiss. When Isaac smelled his clothes, he blessed him and said, the smell of my son is like the smell of an open country that Yah has blessed. May Yah give you dew from the sky, fertile fields on the earth, and plenty of fresh grain and new wine. May nations serve you. May people bow down to you. Be the master of your brothers and may the sons of your mothers bow down to you. Let me read that again. Verse 29. May nations serve you. May people bow down to you. Be the masters of your brothers and may the sons, sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed. May those who bless you be blessed. Isaac finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob had barely left when his brother Esau came in from hunting. Jacob lied to his daddy. Hallelujah. It's the same spirit that goes from one generation to the next generation. Hallelujah. Let's look at when Jacob deceived Esau. When Jacob said he was going to travel to Seir with his brother Esau. And you can find this in Bereshit, Genesis 33, verses 12 through 16. And it reads, Then Esau said, Let's get ready to go, and I'll go with you. Jacob said to him, Sir, you know that the children are frail, and that I have to take care of the flocks and cattle that are nursing their young. If they're driven too hard for even one day, all the flocks will die. Go ahead of me, sir. I will slowly and gently guide the herds that are in front of me at their pace and at the children's pace until I come to you in Seir. Esau said, then let me leave some of my men with you. So Esau wanted to leave some of his men with his brother so that he made sure he was going or coming to the place where they agreed to meet. Hallelujah. Verse 15. Esau said, then let me leave some of my men with you. Why do that? Jacob asked. I only want to win your favor, sir. That day, Esau started back to sir. I mean, to seer. I'm sorry. That day, Esau started back to seer. But Jacob moved to Sukkot, where he built a house for himself and made shelter for his livestock. 
This is why the place is called Sukkot, which means shelters. So again, you have Yaakov walking in the spirit of the fear of authority. Hallelujah. He was afraid, hallelujah, that his brother Esau was going to kill him. Hallelujah. The spirit of the fear of authority has many other spirits that comes with it. One, and I'm quite sure everyone will get this. Hallelujah. It's the spirit of lying. Number two, it's the spirit of deceit. And deceit means a person is dishonest with another person or dishonest with themselves. You can find the definition of deceit in the Strong's Concordance under H4820. That's H4820. Third spirit that comes with the spirit of the fear of authority is deception. Deception means lying and deceiving. And you can find this in the Strong's Concordance under H8257. Hallelujah. Abram had the spirit of the fear of authority, which brings about deception. Isaac had the spirit of the fear of authority as well. And Yaakov had the spirit of the fear of his brother Esau, which brought on lying. Abram, Abram opened the door for the spirit of the fear of authority to come forth in his bloodline. Take a breath. Hallelujah. The question is, can you identify the spirits, the familiar spirits that are in your family? Hallelujah. We have to remember that we all have familiar spirits in our family, hallelujah. And we have to look for the patterns and ask Yah to show us the patterns, hallelujah. And then we have to follow up, hallelujah, and cast out and cast down these spirits, the familiar spirits of authority, hallelujah. Always seek the face of Yah. That is first and foremost. Hallelujah. Do your own research and let Yah guide you so that you will be convinced of the truth in your own mind. I mean, stay blessed, family. Shalom.